fresh crack. Crispy Gala to start this uh, segment off. What's well, good? The guys from Married to the Game are uh, back on YouTube hollering at you. Yeah. Your ear holes. Hit us with that like. Hit us with that like, that subscribe. If you want to, uh, every time we put something new out, get it brought right to your fingertips. We, uh, we were perusing the um, DLF ADP for January and saw that Zach Ertz was on a little bit of a slide. And we wanted to have a chat about it, talk, see, figure it out, get to the bottom of it, see if it's warranted. Yeah. And I don't believe it is. Nah. Um, Not especially when you look at where Kelsey is and what's happened right. over the course of the last four years. Kelsey's up in the, I think, 32? 33. 30, I got him at 34, yeah. So well, One of those three. What I first did was <laughs> went through the ADP from 19 and 20 to see if there was like a, a correlation of like maybe the tight ends tapered off a little bit like in the percentage of where they were being drafted, like round by round. And it did a little bit, but nothing really of note, nothing to make uh, Ertz slide to 63. It wasn't anything crazy like that. There's a little bit of a couple of things that slid down a little bit that maybe tight end tapered off a little bit. People were a little less hot and heavy, but it's not. Well, there's no way he could repeat 2018. (laughs) Right. Nothing to write home about there. But I think at the end of the day, he's the fifth tight end off the board. So... You could potentially, uh, Andrews and Evan Ingram are in front of him, and then it's Kittle and um, Zach, Ertz. Zach Ertz, or uh, Travis Kelsey, sorry. And down with Kittle, of course, But if and I'm down with Kelsey because he's always been super good, but the other guy who always just is right there, right around where Travis Kelsey is, is Zach Ertz, at least since 2016. Right, he's averaging like a point less each year almost, like on average. And so for Kelsey's ADP to be half what Ertz is. And, and, and almost, a, he's Ertz is 29, turns 30 in November. Kelsey's 30, turns 31 in October. So they're so about a year apart. If you wanted to, if, if, if I saw Kelsey's thing coming down because of age, I would be a little bit more like, okay, the whole the community as a whole is thinking age is getting in there. But tight end's typically a position that stays pretty strong if they've been mostly healthy without any crazy injuries which neither one of those guys have had too bad of injuries and have been they've been in and out a little bit here or there but for the most part you know Ertz started off a little shaky but he's been pretty good I mean if you go back to 2016 and you look at uh the average of tight ends you got uh Jordan Reed was number one with 14.1 played a, a small amount of games though then it's Travis Kelsey at two and Rudolph and Ertz at Tied for third with 13.1. Kelsey had 13.9. If you move to 2017, um, you got Gronk at 17.5, Kelsey at 15.6, and Ertz at 14.5 coming in in the third position. If you move to 2018, you have Kelsey at 18.4, Ertz at 17.5, Kittle at 16.2. If you move to 2019, Kelsey at 15.9, Kittle at 15.9, Hooper at 14.8, and Ertz at 14.4. So pretty much every year since 2016, that's as far back as I went, Ertz is only one point behind in in average uh, behind Travis Kelsey, which, you know, a a point over the year is, is, okay, I I can get why you established Kelsey up there and he's in the Chiefs offense and he has Mahomes. That's all awesome and well and good, but... Ertz has done nothing but go out there and week in and week out, year in, year out, just garner my respect of saying this this guy's a, a very good, trustworthy tight end that I'm down to plug in every single week, and I know he's normally not going to hurt me. Absolutely. He gives you an edge. I mean, the track record and stability, I don't understand why he slide. Like, let Ertz slide, you know, in my opinion. I hope this turns into a hootie song, right? right. Let, let Ertz slide. <laughs> The but sun I mean, comes out tomorrow. Let Ertz slide. If he had a bad year last year, then I could, that would make a little bit of sense. But my man had 128 targets, which was second most among tight ends behind Kelsey. He had 88 catches, which was right. third most. And then the fourth most yards with 918, but he, he missed a game and it was tied for fourth with six touchdowns. And it's like, well, that's a stellar year. He was 36th overall in tight end premium leagues, and that's at every with every position taken into account. He was the 36th best player. Mm-hmm. So in tight end premium, like I st- it's th- now the ADP we're looking at isn't tight end premium, but I'm just making a point. Like his yards per reception were actually up from 2018 last right. year, and then you you have to believe that one of 
Alshon Jeffrey or Deshaun Jackson should be healthy at some point next year, mm -hmm. and they're both going to be there based on the contracts that they're giving out. I can't see them both not being there. And so that having some more options in this offense is, is only going to free Ertz up more, like like what you saw in 18. Yeah, I mean, you could argue either way there. Some people would say, well, there's more mouths to feed. It's, it's not as good. But, I but mean, Wentz is his boy. Right, that, and that kind of goes back to the talking about Mahomes and, and Kelsey being tied together. Maybe Ertz's contract is pretty, pretty much going to be there until at least 2021. Right. And Ertz and, and uh, Wentz. Wentz have the best uh, relationship on and off the field as you could ever ask for. Like, of course, he's not going to repeat his record-breaking right. uh, run of 2018 there, or whenever that was, 18. 2017. Yeah. But he's still great. Ertz is going to get him the ball. Now, Ertz isn't isn't exactly the best run after the catch guy. Like there's a lot of, you could find a lot of stuff where Ertz just kind of gets what, what's there and, and goes down, but that's fine. Like he's, he's, an he's right there, route right. He's right there with, with Kelsey pretty much every step of the way points wise. Um, obviously you also have Dallas Goddard in the mix, but I don't think Goddard's coming in and they're going to bench Ertz because of what Goddard can do. Like Goddard's a very good player. And if Ertz wasn't there, you would have to have absolutely love Dallas Goddard, but and I do love Goddard. I, me too. I, I want some Goddard. The fact of the matter is, is Ertz is there, and they're, they're probably going to use both guys as time moves forward. And you know, Djax and Alshon aren't, aren't exactly the pictures of health, so one or the two of them could be on the field for most of the season. But there's a decent chance that you know one, one or the two both. of them is, or both are not going to be on the field for chunks of the season. And you could you could throw Ertz in that category, missing a game or two here or there because he he has uh, had that, but. The guys that you're taking in front of them are Evan Ingram, which super young, and Mark Andrews, super young. Which, so, you know, I can understand the ageism to a point where Evan Ingram's 25 and Mark Andrews is 23, but Evan Ingram hasn't stayed healthy. No, like, I mean, love the idea of Evan Ingram. Me too. I mean, I, I have Evan Ingram in places and I'm, I'm not selling cheap or anything like that, and I'm still willing to acquire him, but I'm not taking him over Zach Ertz. I mean, Let's be real. There's been flashes, but you can't depend on that, man. I'm right. not ready to depend and, on and him. And now you're year. tied. You're, you're Daniel Jones is going to. I'm not, you know, not saying that I have any ill will towards Daniel Jones or I don't think he's good. I, I don't know yet. Like, I, I need to see more before I can figure it out. And now you got the, the tight end who's tied to Daniel Jones, who, you know, I don't know if that's going to be his dude or not. It could be. It could and not he, be. And I just he needs to be able to stay healthy. Right. And and then you bring in Mark Andrews, who you know for a season was averaged one point, uh, not quite a point. He was thirteen point eight, and Ertz was fourteen point four. If just going on this year's average, excuse me. But this is that's that's one year on a really an awesome year by Andrews, especially in the offense that he was in. Like he was getting the lion's share of 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 the volume going around in that offense, and if. They do add some pieces at Hollywood Brown matures. And, you know, I'm not 100% sure that, that the Lamar Jackson thing is going to be years and years of awesomeness in an offense. It very well could be. But there's there's also a chance that, you know, it could taper off within a year or two. I, I don't know. And, and again, I, I'm not trying to talk shit about Lamar Jackson either. But it's not proven year after year like Ertz is tied to Wentz on the Eagles on a very good team. Now, the Ravens are a great team, great organization. Um, and the, for Mark Andrews, and Mark to come Andrews out here is a great and talent. Like, this I love early him. in his career, sure. You know, I, I, I'm very enamored with Mark Andrews, but you know, that's the point is that it's it was one year, and it's an offense that teams are going to have a whole off season to figure out, and they're going to have to expand. And right. he, Lamar's going to have to become a better thrower of the football for this to continue was, working. Right. And I, I'm not saying it won't. I hope it does. But I'm, I definitely don't There's, feel like it's stable it's, as Wentz and Ertz. I agree. 100%. And when you're in a startup, you're yeah. trying to win. I mean, yeah, I am. You want to win now. And what what is so when I get it, you're in a startup and you're looking at these ages when you're drafting these guys. So you're taking Ingram and Andrews above a guy. But like you said, you're in a startup. You're ready to win right now. Ertz is 29. But again, I think you're getting premium into for prime, tight end. prime time tight end. And I want to win. And Ertz is going to guarantee me uh, an edge. Good points pretty much every week. I'm not saying that Andrews and Ingram can't be and won't be. Maybe they're the changing of the guard and they'll be the next great guys at the top of this list. Andrews but makes a little more sense than Ingram for sure just because of the season Ingram's that he had. Ingram's had some great chunks, so sure. that's what you're chasing. But I'm trying to win right now, so I'm not worried about Ertz being 29. Like I would much rather have him over Andrews in a startup because I'm trying to win right now. Now, if you draft a team and say, hey – or, or you're not in a startup and you're and you're 
not really in the mode of winning. I'm down for you to say, hey, let me trade my Zach Ertz on a team that probably isn't going to win in the next year or two for a guy like Mark Andrews. I can get down with that all day long or an Evan Ingram. Like if, if you want to make that kind of move, I think that's a great move to make. But in a startup, when I'm trying to draft a team to win, unless you're going with the productive struggle right off the rip, I don't know too many people who are drafting a team to be like, ah, oh, three years down the line, baby. I'm this gonna is compete. it. You yeah. know, especially if you're playing for any money, like I want, right. I want to put Ertz on my team and try to go win this championship in the next two years tied to a guy who I know is going to deliver the ball most, you know, wh where it, when it's supposed to be, where it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to get there nine times out of ten. And if all else fails, the guy who he's looking for, on, that Wentz is looking for on the field is, is Ingram or uh, is Ertz. Ertz. So not that Lamar Jackson isn't looking for um, Mark Andrews, but this was a pretty, pretty decent uh, ceiling season from that offense and what Andrews can give you. And he was still a little bit short of probably not. A gr there was a ton of injuries on the Eagles. Offensive line was rotating all around. Uh, Wentz was just kind of getting back into his groove. At one point, they were starting like a fourth tight end at receiver. So they had nothing going on. So the mm -hmm. defense is like, where's Ertz? Um, right. So I, I agree. I don't. I don't think. I don't think the slide is necessarily warranted. I think, like you, like you said, but it, it, for me, for for personally, let Ertz slide. Because <laughs> if the sun comes out tomorrow, I want fucking Ertz for sure. Like, Absolutely. and if you get rid, of, if you don't have Ertz, you can't have the team name my Balzac Ertz. Right. Like, I mean, <laughs> come on. I want a chance at that. You can't name your team that if you don't have right. Ertz on your team. Right. Yeah, I still have. Samaje P run on a squad so I can name my team Samaje Trois. That's you the know? only reason. You just keep him around. Yeah. I, around. He might act, not actually be on the team anymore. Anyways, I digress. That should wrap up today's video. Uh, if you like what you heard, hit us up with that like. Hit us up with a subscribe. Comment in the section below. Shout out Hootie or Darius. Darius. Charles, South Carolina yeah. guy. Absolutely. Nice guy. Absolutely. Got to gotta check them out at the uh, Volvo Stadium if you haven't before. They play every year. It's pretty cool. Uh, Let's go ahead and wrap it up, and uh, we'll catch you later. Or you can always catch us on Patreon. Yep, we're about to go FF over Dynasty. there. Patreon.com slash EFF Dynasty. We're about to go record a whole show uh, for the Pleasure Chester. That's what, we call, that's what we're going to call it, the Pleasure Chest. That's what we call it. All right, we'll see you later. Peace.